Hello, and welcome to the tutorial video for Prelab 7 for STATS 250. In this Prelab, we're going to talk about how to construct a confidence interval and uh, perform a hypothesis test for one population mean using R and R commander. So uh, I just have the R console open here, and to open our R commander, like we usually do, I'm just going to type library, open parenthesis, capital R, CMDR, close that parenthesis, and hit enter. Okay, so now that I've got our commander open, I want to start by loading some data. So the data that we're going to be using for this pre-lab tutorial video this week is called firedrill.r data. And this contains uh, information about evacuation times of a plant in seconds. So the plant conducted a number of fire drills and recorded the number of seconds it took to completely evacuate the plant. And the plant manager claims that the average evacuation time is 40 seconds, and they want to check this claim. So let's go ahead and load this data into R. So as we usually do, we're going to come up to data, load data set, and I have the R data file saved in my stats250 prelab7 folder. This may be in your downloads or wherever you saved it from um, downloading the data from Canvas. So I'm just going to double click this to open it. And you can see that fire drill has been loaded into our commander up here as it's now the active data set. So before we construct a confidence interval for this population mean or perform a hypothesis test, we need to make sure that we can uh, satisfy the necessary assumptions. So here we're assuming that this is a random sample that's representative of the population of interest. Um, but we also want to make sure that the data come from a normally distributed population. We can do that graphically, for instance, by constructing a histogram or a QQ plot. So here I'm going to start by constructing a histogram. We can go to graphs, histogram. We want to choose the evac time variable. Click OK. And we've constructed a histogram here. Now you'll want to make sure that your histogram is appropriately titled, and you can change that title by going into the options tab in that wizard. So this looks approximately bell-shaped, right? But maybe there's a little bit more data on the left side than on the right. And so maybe it's not entirely normally distributed. And a better way to check normality would be a QQ plot. So let's again come over to graphs, quantile comparison plot, evac time. Remember that you can change the title of the graph by going, coming to the options tab and changing this graph title box here. Again, I don't want to identify any points on the QQ plot, don't really need them, and I'll just click OK here. So now I've got a QQ plot. Remember, to evaluate a QQ plot, we're looking for most of our data to line up in a nice straight line across the plot. Um, and these dashed lines here represent 95% confidence intervals at every point along the axis here. So it looks like actually all of our data falls within these 95% confidence bands, and this is a really nice, clean, straight line. So here we can assume that the normality assumption has been satisfied. All right, so let's get started by making, uh, or by looking at some numerical summaries. So I'll close this plot. We want some numerical summaries of the data, so remember to do that. We come up to Statistics, Summaries, Numerical Summaries, and we want to choose the evac time variable. Now if we come into the Statistics tab, you'll notice that we can choose which statistics this numerical summaries function provides us. We also want to check standard error of the mean here. This is going to provide us the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of sample means. We'll talk about what that means in just a second and in class. So we want to make sure this is checked and click OK. And again, now in our output window, it provides us our usual numerical summary information. So the mean evacuation time is 49 seconds. The standard deviation of the evacuation times is 21.5 seconds. And there were 50 observations total. And here's our other five number summary here with our quantiles. The additional thing that you'll notice is there's this thing that says SE of mean here. So this is the uh, on approximately the average distance of the sample mean to the population mean in repeated samples of the same size n. So this is the standard deviation of x of our variable divided by the square root of n, which is 50. Now we can construct a confidence interval. 
So by default, R gives you a confidence interval and a hypothesis test in the same output, which means you can use this output for both and modify uh, the inputs that you provide accordingly to get the appropriate confidence levels or significance levels for your test. So to perform this hypothesis test and build a confidence interval, we're going to come up to statistics, means, and choose single sample t-test here. The variable that we want to conduct a t-test is on is evac time, and now we can choose our alternative hypothesis. Note that our syntax for not equal to is an exclamation point and then an equal to. So this means not the exclamation point means not, not equal to mu zero. So this is the two-sided alternative, and it gives us both one-sided alternatives as well. Now here, remember that the plant manager has claimed that the average evacuation time is 40 seconds. So our null hypothesis is that mu is equal to 40 seconds. And we can construct a 95% confidence in, uh, interval by setting the confidence level here. Remember that this is also equivalent to a 5% significance level hypothesis test. So this is one minus alpha. So we'll construct a two-sided test. Our null hypothesis mean is 40, and we want a 5% significance level. And let's click OK. So now let's take a look at this output. So R will give us the test statistic for the test, our t value, the degrees of freedom for the test, as well as the p-value for that associated with that test statistic. It also reminds us of the alternative hypothesis we chose. So here, we've our alternative is that the true mean is not equal to 40. And then down here, it gives us our 95% confidence interval. We can use this confidence interval to conduct the test as well. Because 40 falls outside of our confidence interval, it's not a reasonable value for the true population parameter, or the true population mean mu. And so we would reject this null hypothesis. That's backed up with a very small p-value as well. So let's write this up in our, our markdown document. So here, we can come into our, our markdown. I'm going to create a blank line between the last set of back ticks and what I'm about to write. So my document formats nicely. And I can type, say, for instance, the interpretation of the confidence interval. So I'll type with 95% confidence, confidence, we estimate that the true population evac mean evacuation time is between 42.8863 seconds and 51.1137 seconds because 40 is outside of the confidence interval. We reject the null hypothesis that the mean evacuation time, the true mean evacuation time is 40 seconds. So let's scroll up to the top of our markdown document. We can replace this with our main, uh, this with our main title. So this is prelab seven one mean. Notice there is not a colon in this title. If you put a colon in the title, it will break. We're going to replace this with our name here. So 250 instructional team. And we want to save our R markdown file. So we'll come up to file, save our markdown file as, and I'm just going to save this in my prelab seven folder. So I'll call this prelab seven. Click save. And now I can click generate report. So in my browser, uh, our report has opened. You can see it's got this histogram, the QQ plot, as well as our output from the t-test and the confidence interval and the interpretation that we wrote down here. Now remember, if you go into your file explorer or finder on a Mac, you'll see a prelab7.html file. This is the file that you're going to upload to Canvas and not anything that's saved from the browser. So you don't want to go through the save menu in Safari, for instance. So upload this Prelab 7 file to Canvas, and that's it for this Prelab. We're looking forward to seeing you in lab this week.